Okay. I hope this audio is okay. My AirPods are being super finicky. Greetings, star beings of infinite abundance and potential. Hi, Dearish. I'm channeling through some additional information and resources after my session. After I do sessions, I find these extra bonus downloads keep coming through and so I was guided to just go live and talk more about the things that emerge and the themes and it's such a pleasure to get to share them out with you so easily now that I finally figured out how to press the live button hey hi dish and one thing that has been super fun for me is popping fear bubbles, bubbles of fear. And in the programming of our thoughts, I love noticing how fears can be framed as what if, what if I don't know what I want. That is a sacral chakra imbalance. That is a fear-based thought because it's a question. What if I don't know what I want? I'm so unhappy. I'm not getting what I want. I keep trying. And then I keep wanting and needing. And the focus stops being on abundance or gratitude. And everything gets kind of slowed down. And then we're confused. Hi, Ellen. And then there's this huge fear. What if I don't know what I want? We're on this journey. We've given up so much to be here. Our souls are on a mission to elevate and ascend to a higher rebirth. Doing our best to make it happen. And what happens when this old little fear comes up? What if I don't know what I want? Well, that is a fear. Um, that is a feeling. So we should probably normalize that feeling. Gratitude grafting, Ellen, yes. Let's graft on some gratitude. Uh, I love that, it reminds me of plants. I'm seeing like a beautiful Meyer lemon or like fruiting, getting fruit to bloom in this container. Um, yeah, hey. Um, that fear is normal. Wouldn't it be abnormal to not wonder how do I know what I'm getting what I want? But here's the secret. Pleasure and enjoyment are the natural state of your chakras. And so you can feel that and you can notice the ways that you're already constantly making decisions and constantly expressing preferences and constantly meeting your wants, needs, and desires. So if you would like to know what it is that you want, then why don't you consider focusing on the things that you know that you already want? Why don't you consider noticing the things that you like? Qualities of yourself that you find to be particularly effective? Why don't you notice what kinds of flowers you like? You can notice what kinds of foods you prefer. Notice the innate intelligence of your sacral chakra. The challenge of believing I deserve pleasure. Yes. If I'm not... Hmm. 
So that's another fear. What if I don't deserve to feel good? What if I don't deserve to be happy? So you can ground your root chakra, your lowest energy center, and remember that I'm worthy of pleasure. I'm worthy of pleasure because I'm not special. I'm not special. I'm just like every other being on this planet, and every being on this planet deserves to feel pleasure because I'm just like everybody else. I'm just like the birds. I'm just like my friends. I'm just like my ancestors. My ancestors had a lot of pleasure. They also had a lot of suffering, but they deserved pleasure. And because my ancestors deserve pleasure, I deserve pleasure. There's nothing about me that deserves pleasure any more or any less than anyone else. It's simply how it is. So what if I don't know what I want? Well, if I don't know what I want in one situation, I definitely know what I want in other situations. And by focusing on what I know that I want, I can become more and more, day by day, the kind of person who knows what they want. And I can step into my higher self because my higher self knows absolutely what they want and realizes that I deserve to enjoy the things that I want to the degree that it's good for me. And if it's good for me, it's good for my community and it's good for the people I care about because I'm living my sole purpose. So really, it's pretty effortless to know what we want. The only hard part is releasing the fear. What if I don't know? But knowing what you want is actually pretty, takes absolutely zero effort. The hardest part is letting go of the fear of what if I don't have the answer right now? So what if I don't have the answer right now? Then what happens? Well, then it could be a no. You can practice with your no's and find your yes. So if you think of something that you don't want, then that's another way that you already know what you want. And once you know what you don't want, you're already enjoying not being in that situation. It's really great to be uh, in the shade right now and not in full sun because it's really hot right now and I don't want to be sweaty on this video. And so I can enjoy the fact and be appreciative and have gratitude for the fact that I'm getting to sit in the shade. And I'm already bit by bit stepping into my higher self because I know what I want which is to be in the shade right now. And so I can spend time in that frequency of the vibration of the person who knows, of the version of me that knows what they want. That doesn't mean that, there's, that I always know what I want. In fact, there's a lot of times that we don't necessarily know what we want. And those times are actually very powerful. Very powerful, the power of not choosing because it's infinite potential. So another fear, what if I don't know what I want, is that I'm, you're so powerful that you could manifest any number of things right now. You could make so many different things happen just by not knowing what you want. By not knowing what you want, you have all of the possibilities open until you make a choice. And so not knowing what you want, not only is it effortless to know what you want, it's also very powerful, the power of not choosing. And so you can feel, if you are ever feeling the fear, the fear-based thought, what if I don't know what I want, you might choose a strategy, alternatively, of considering all of the options that might be possible, and which ones may or may you not enjoy being part of. So if I don't know what I want, that makes me very powerful because I'm open to more than one outcome. If I know what I want at every single moment of every day, then there's not very much room for surprises or fun synchronicities. If I know exactly what I want at every single moment of every single day, then I might be living a life where I'm not getting what I want a bunch of the time 
because my feeling about what I want is so precise. My feeling about what I want is so clear. My vision for what I want is so structured that I'm going to feel disappointed every day, several times, because I know too much about what I want. So that's another imbalance that may happen. And maybe that's sometimes why we can feel this, this feeling of disappointment. But for me, I was guided to speak about what if I don't know what I want and that feeling. I know that many of us, including myself, including all of us, have moments on our journeys where we, it feels like we don't know what we want. But the truth is, and the teaching is, that's coming through at least, is that we absolutely do know exactly what we want. And what we want is to fulfill our highest soul contract with this rebirth. What we want is infinite abundance, um, graciousness, and pleasure. And fulfilling the soul contracts that our ancestors left for us. That's what we want. And we know that we want that. And all we have to do to manifest more of what we want and spend less time with the fear-based thought, what if I don't know, is to simply listen to the wants that are manifesting right now. I guarantee you that if you tune in right here and right now, you might discover a want or an impulse. The impulse might be to scratch your face. The impulse might be to get up and drink a glass of water. The impulse might be to feel some other physical sensation or you might have an impulse to go and do a task because that's your responsibility right now is to complete a set of tasks. Just by noticing what you feel called to do in a given moment, either because of biology or because of a schedule or because of a, a sheer impulse, you're paying attention to that and that is a want. Wants, needs and desires are all one. They're all connected. They're simply impulses and they're simply ways that our body speaks to us. Um, needs are a little bit more urgent or a little bit more important when it comes to negotiating boundaries. What if I don't know what I want? What if I don't know what my wants are? What if I don't know what my desires are? What if I don't know what my needs are? Well, if you don't know what your needs are, it's a little bit more of a... Um, urgent matter than if you don't know what your wants are. That all of our wants and all of our needs and all of our desires are constantly speaking to us. They're speaking to us through our somatic body, through our dreams, through our intuitions, and through our, and through our conscious mind. And so it's not a matter of knowing what I want. It's a matter of removing obstacles for the conscious mind to accept the needs, wants, and desires that are constantly and already arising from your body and your energy body. So the more you listen to your body, the more you're open to listening to what your needs and wants are. And the less you judge those needs and wants and impulses, the more you'll become that kind of person that version of yourself who knows what they want and you'll already and spontaneously be manifesting more and more of what you want and less and less of what you don't want and it's not necessarily about fickle wants it's more about deeper wants deeper needs deeper desires and when those are being manifested it's not really selfish because we're living in a deeper and truer alignment with our higher self. And when we're living with a deeper and truer alignment with ourself, stepping into being the kind of person who knows what they want, then we're doing a service to the people around us because we're operating with more clarity and abundance. And when we operate with more clarity and abundance, then we're not constricted when we meet people and we cultivate a happy aura and a positive space and energy around us and uh, more service is possible and more good is able to be done. So don't let anybody tell you that it's selfish 
to do self-reflection or self-care if it becomes